What's up? I have an iPad Pro 12.9 here, 2015 edition. Um, and it has no power, and I don't really have a whole lot of info on it. It's uh, it's the guy in my office building, his mom, and uh, some I don't know, it just died. But anyways, one of the best things about this TriStar tester is that it's really made iPad repairs a lot, lot easier. Uh, takes a lot of the guesswork out of um, what's going on. So you know, you plug this thing in, you you do the test, and if it says oh uh, charge port failed, then you know it's probably a charge port problem. You know, if it passes the charge port and it goes on, and something on the maybe the PP5V0 line on the on the on the TriStar uh, fails, then you know it's a TriStar problem without even opening it up. And you know, if the TriStar passes, then you know that it's probably a short on VCC main or something like that. You know, in this case, um, this showed. Let's see, what did it show? It showed that the charge port was fine. It showed that the TriStar was fine, and it just says battery not detected. So, I, I kind of get when it says battery not detected, I get false positives on this. So, but it's usually a short. You know, if it's fixable. And in this case, you know, I plugged it into an ammeter, and ammeter said said uh, 0.5 amps so and after you open it up then you just do a quick test to confirm that it is indeed a short on VCC main so this is a short on VCC main alright uh, so iPad Pro 12.9 2015 so what I'm getting at is that this TriStar tester is gold in terms of iPad repair because it'll tell me a lot of things without even opening the stupid thing up, you know, and opening it up and, and sealing it back. Th that's probably the, the biggest battle <laughs> with these things, which is why I didn't really fix these things before, you know, because you would spend all the time opening it up. Sometimes you'd crack the digitizer or LCD or something like that, and you try to put it back together, and it's it's always such a pain in the butt, man, because customers always want their um, devices in the same way in which they were sent to you, you know, and when you're and there's really no way to test it without opening it up, you know, but the TriStar tester eliminates that that problem. Okay. So for this issue, we uh, uh, I just did a quick test on what did I do? Let's see, let's kill this. So what I did was I just tested these backlight filters first, okay? And it showed 0.15, and usually if it's a good reading, it should show around 0.3. So I immediately knew that it's probably a short on VCC main, and then I ended up testing this uh, touch filter here too, and it said zero. So so when it says zero, then there's a there's a short on the main power line, which is which you know this doesn't label all these all the lines, but you can tell that this is most likely VDD main, VCC main. Sorry. Uh, okay. So in my experience, when there's a VCC main short, it's almost always always one of these components around the PMIC here. Okay. So that's what that's what I normally focus on, and and I still really haven't found a better way to to detect short. Um, aside from using uh, free spray, free spray is probably the quickest way, in my opinion, to to detect a short. So and that's the method that I still use. Um, right now, looking at the logic board under the microscope, um, I put my DC power supply to four volts, two amps, and in order to set your DC power supply to a maximum of two amps. You have to you have to short the two leads together and then turn the amps up on your turn the amps knob on your uh, DC power supply. Okay, so I just have it set to four volts, two amps all the time, and, it's, and I just leave it there. Okay, so seeing that I'm going to focus my efforts on on uh, around the PMIC here, um, what I normally do is I just inject voltage around the PMIC, around these caps. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do in this case. So, alright, so a little free spray. And basically you just kind of go around it. I already know which one it is because I've already tested this thing. So, um, but I'll show you. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, let's take a look. So basically these three caps right here, these two caps, uh, that's where I'm going to start. So, alright, so, so if you take a look right here, you'll see that this cap right here will turn, see that, see how that turned hot before anything else? 
And so that's not supposed to be the case. So I'm assuming that that is most likely the short. So I don't even use my soldering iron to, to remove these things anymore. I just kind of pop them off. And I do not replace them, no. So, so this is most likely the culprit right here. And we will confirm with our multimeter. This is indeed shorted. And then we'll check the power line again. Just to make sure we're getting a pretty decent diode mode reading. 0.17, okay. Now we're back in business. So let me just dump this. And then, and then it's, I just reassemble everything after this. And that is the end of the day. Alright. So let me just put this back together because I kind of jacked it up a little, little bit already. Testing a few things here and there. I think I'll just leave it like this. Yeah, there's Kaplan under there, I believe. Is there Kaplan? Yeah, there's Kaplan under there, so I don't really need to worry about anything. So I'm just going to put this back together, and then we should, well, let's test it real quick first. And if this is good, then we will just close it up and call it a day. Uh, shit. All right. There we go. We are back in business, and that is the end of this one. Uh, hold up. I need to put the screw in. Anyways, you get the idea. I just took my finger off the battery connector, that's why it went out. But we are pretty much back in business, so all I need to do is close this up down, and then we're good to go. Alright, so, thanks for watching. So, I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel, and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course. Um, we have it hosted at udemy.com, and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction um, the reviews are pretty good um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station your micro soldering um, station and how to use diode mode. Uh, the third part is the three most common repairs which is no touch, no backlight, no charge. And the fourth part is all about data recovery. So um, if you go through our website it's a hundred bucks and some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things or you can't learn micro soldering online. I beg to differ. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago, and that's how I learned it. Um, and not only that, but you know, you go to a live course. Some people like live courses, but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course, right? So, um, and then yes, you're right. You can go to YouTube and watch all these videos, um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean, you can also take a class, but, uh, you know, to get your feet wet, I think this is the best thing to do right here. And I vouch for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I was also going to say, 
um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy Udemy and they'll give you the $50 off. Thanks.